Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where we discuss everything about Skullgirls Mobile. We finally reached the end of the series and now we will be talking about diamond variants and the best ones you should look out for, especially if you're new to the game. Diamond variants are often the cream of the crop. They have the highest stats of all the other tiers and they often come with ridiculous abilities that is unique and powerful. Most diamond variants will be able to carry you just from their stats alone. With that said, there are diamond variants which is not so great because they have poor synergistic signature abilities, but these are often in the minority. As always, I will be choosing 10 diamond variants that are very strong for general use. These are variants that have been tried and tested to really be the standout among the crowd. I'm not gonna lie, there will definitely be arguments about this list because it is very hard to just pick 10 out of the many really good diamonds. Hence, just because a variant is not listed here does not mean they are bad per se. They might be overshadowed by other variants and may not be worth the amount of investment, or they might simply be very similar to another variant. While I do try to mention some of my considerations and why certain variants are not in this list, please do ask around for more direct advice. So just as a disclaimer here, the order in this list is random and is no indication of their strength. I've decided that putting numbers on things can be quite distracting from what I'm trying to say and it is best to keep it as simple as possible. Without further ado, we're going straight into the random list of the best diamond variants in this game. First one up is Model Leader and oh man does she have a reputation. Model Leader is one of the best defender in Rift Battles ever since she was released. Being a water element immediately provides synergy with frost armor, but in addition to that, her signature ability is one of a kind that is just so perfect for her role as a defender. Her first ability is a team-wide support that clears all teammate debuffs and grant armor periodically. This is literally the best kind of frost armor support you can possibly have as it clears any pesky curse or armor break that is often used as a counter. What makes her special is her second ability that grants her permanent auto block every 15% health lost. Auto block is insanely powerful in defense because it can stop your combos and suddenly provide a way for the AI to kill you with a blockbuster or special. It especially punishes high combo hit count characters. Combine this with Annie's mark ability, Blue Shift, that reduces incoming damage for each combo hit under 5, and you have an absolutely powerful synergy that punishes opponents regardless of the number of hit counts. High hit counts get countered by auto block, and low hit counts get countered by her own mark ability, Blue Shift. There are a few ways to counter mod leader, but they often require certain specific diamond variants, and unless you have them, she is not a defender that can be taken down easily. Next we have Beast King, and this might be biased, but man do I love Beast King. The ability to inflict curse is absolutely powerful, and the fact that he gains even more power based on the number of debuffs is insane. Combine this with Lupin Pummel that can inflict several stacks of slow, and Beast King will be able to one-shot most opponents very easily. The only caveat is that he will need to deal 10% damage from a single hit, which is actually not that hard to achieve at all. You might need a little bit of setup when against optimal defenders, but aside from that, you can easily bring a sketchy in the back and he will start wrecking havoc, especially in prize fights. Buff control is a very powerful ability and curse is a very powerful debuff. I do have to mention that Snakebite could also take this spot as he has a unique utility that no other Beowulf variants have. But for my own personal preference, I really like Beast King a lot and for those of you who watches my stream, you know how often I can kill enemies in literally 20 seconds with this variant. An absolute star and one of my favorite variants in this game. Then we have Standout, which is the premier buff control variant. As an Eliza, she has access to Chaos Banish, which is one of the best special moves in this game. In addition to that, her signature ability also allows her to eat buffs and gain meter. You might be thinking, why would I need this ability if I already have Chaos Banish? Well, the answer is that Standout, unlike other Eliza variants, can also deal and eat permanent buffs such as Auto Block from Model Leader. 
This niche makes her top tier in the buff control department, and with the highest attack stat of all Eliza's, she also has the damage to back it up. And as an additional bonus, she also has her own way to gain health regeneration. Now, this isn't in the same level of other Eliza variants such as Bloodbath or Bloody Valentine, but it can be quite significant for her survivability, especially in Rift Battles. One of the best variants to have for Rift, and definitely an Eliza that you should prioritize when you get her. Coming up next, we have Jin Frizz, a unique Philia variant with access to plenty of random buffs and a whole lot of damage. Jin Frizz is a simple variant, but she offers so much that no other Philia variants have access to. With the second highest attack stat of all variants, including other characters, you can bet Jin to deal plenty of insane damage from the get go. Her abilities further provide her more damage output from the potential to get 5 stacks of Enrage in a relatively simple way. Combine this with Philia's marketability, Leech, Jin is a damage dealing juggernaut with plenty of sustain and regeneration. That is really good and very powerful. Now, I do have to mention that Class Cutter is also a pretty good variant to have. However, I think Jin nudges over Class Cutter because of her high damage ceiling and the potential to get game-changing buffs every 10 seconds. Buffs are often defensive, so her first signature ability also provides some way of sustain for her in a fight. Sometimes you get lucky and roll invincibility or immunity, and the game is pretty much in your hands. Jin Frizz should be one to look out for. Another infamous defender comes into play with Splitting Image. Splitting Image is a defender that gets stronger the more HP you have on her. With the ability to constantly regenerate herself in addition to permanent immunity, this makes her a very notably strong defender if your offense is lacking. Not to mention, Light Element is one of the strongest defensive synergy in Rift Battles, and Splitting Image appreciates this very much. There's not much to say about splitting image otherwise. Her passive abilities make her an absolute monster in high price fights where the opponent has high bonus HP. If you find it difficult to beat splitting image, that just shows that your offensive set is lacking and needs to be improved. Splitting image is one of the best defenders in the game and another one you should very much avoid if you're not confident in your offensive sets. Next we have Neuromancer and oh boy is Neuromancer unfair. Having access to Neuromancer is like having a cheat code to this game. Neuromancer provides so much utility in a very brain dead and easy way that you don't even need to think much when playing her. Her ability provides her plenty of meter gain when the opponent blocks a hit. This allows her to charge her tier 3 unblockable blockbuster super fast just by tapping recklessly. Painwheel Stinger is an absolute staple for Neuromancer because a single use literally fills up 60% of the blockbuster meter which is crazy. Furthermore, her second ability allows her to damage opponents in the bench with a blockbuster. This is also very powerful in Rift Battles because it allows you to avoid plenty of on-death abilities by tagging them out when they have low HP and then killing them off in the bench. Also as a Painwheel, she has one of the highest attack stat in this game as well. I was not kidding when I say that Neuromancer is a cheat code in this game and is one of the best variants to have, full stop. We're past the halfway mark here with Somersault. I've mentioned this before in previous videos that Parasol has one of the best kits in the game with access to very useful buffs such as immunity and on-demand precision. Somersault fixes one of Parasol's weaknesses, which is buff control. Her ability to remove the opponent's buff and health while simply being near a tier is phenomenal. Now, it's not at the same level of Eliza or Standout, but it is still very, very good. Just by having this one ability already puts her above a lot of variants because she literally has the tools to deal with almost everything the game has to offer. I'm not gonna lie. I think Somersault has way too much things in her kit. 
Her second ability is less popular, but provides her further firepower and potentially a different playstyle to use her if the player so wishes. Not to mention, she also has the highest raw attack stat of all pair souls in the game. I feel like I don't have to explain myself anymore, Somersault has it all. Precision, buff control, immunity, and damage. She only lacks regeneration, but given her kit, I think this is a weakness that she needs to have. Then we have Xbot, a premier precision damage powerhouse. I've talked about Xbot before in a previous video, but to summarize, Xbot will deal a lot of damage while also ignoring signature abilities from precision. What is crazy about Xbot is that she can do this in a very simple and almost brain dead way. You just have to get away from the opponent as much as you can, stack up those buffs, and then shoot laser beams until they're dead. This is a very unique playstyle that no other character has access to. Her ability to inflict death mark while gaining precision also provides a very good damage output. And combine this with Robofortune's marquee ability, Ping Check, that provides enrages, your damage can easily multiply further. And then we have her Barrier and Regeneration ability, which is absolutely insane because it heals up her health so fast that it should have been illegal. Regeneration is not a Robofortune trait, but Xbot is a unique case and funny enough, has one of the best regeneration abilities in this game because it does not come from a buff, and hence, cannot be countered with Curse. Speaking of Curse, because Xbot relies a lot on her buffs, this is the best counter to her abilities, so do be aware of any Curse of Knowledge or Curse when you use Xbot. Xbot is such a slick and simple design with a very to understand ability but the payoff is so huge. Props to the developer who designed this ability, my hat goes off to ya. Okay, we're almost at the end here with Lovecrafted. So before we delve into her, I just want to mention that I did consider Plot Twisted here instead. However, I think Plot Twisted has been solved for the most part and have fallen slightly out of favor over stronger defenders like Mod Leader. Regardless, she is still one of the better defensive variants in this game. With Lovecrafted, she is the offensive diamond variant with access to plenty of really cool tools. First of all, an instant blockbuster disable just by being near an opponent is a really good ability for Squiggly, which is a high hit count character that can easily fill up the opponent's meter. Second, Squiggly also has access to Curse, one of the most powerful debuffs in the game. Third, Lovecrafted inflicts heavy bleed every 10th hit which is a very good debuff to wear down the opponent. All these tools in combination makes Lovecrafted a very reliable offensive unit that can destroy a lot of foes if used correctly. I see Lovecrafted as like the opposite of Somersault. While Somersault has plenty of buffs to provide her utility, Lovecrafted relies on debuffs to severely weaken the opponent instead. It's a really interesting angle to look at it. While she does not have the highest burst damage to kill opponents in a single hit, I love the fact that her damage and ability still reflect Squiggly's playstyle as a multi-hit character, while eliminating the weaknesses that is associated with it. She's a very cool design and a very powerful variant to have. Finally, we have Trust Sheik as the final diamond variant in this list. Valentine has a long history of being a support variant, but Trust turns that around by being a premier damage dealing carry in this game. Similar to Lovecrafted, she inflicts plenty of debuff to weaken defenders severely. However, the difference lies in her character as a Valentine which has plenty of unique tools that no other character has. Regeneration is a big part of Valentine's kit, and the ICU marquee ability provides amazing survivability for Tress in a fight. And of course, we cannot forget the fact that Valentine can deal tons of burst damage from triple counter venoms, which combined with Deathmark and Armor Break can deal a lot of damage in a few button taps. Recently, we do have a new Diamond Valentine in the name of Wetwork, which is another offensive variant. I think both are very good offensively as they provide a similar kind of playstyle. Tress requires crit while Wetwork has access to Enrage to further bolster her damage. The reason why I put Tress in this list instead of Wetwork is very minor, 
and it is arguable that wet work can also fit here. Tress has been around longer and I am more confident in including her in this list. Furthermore, her dark element provides a slight edge over wet work because she can deal slightly more damage against light defenders like Splitting Image, Assassin's Creed, and Dream Pan. Just as a reminder, Light Variants are again one of the best elements for a defender and being a dark elemental offensive variant gives her a slight increase in elemental bonus damage. But again, Wet Work does have Enraged stack, so this might just be a small nitpick. Regardless, both are very good to have and Tress is a very strong offensive variant in this game. Alright y'all, so that is the end of this video. I highlighted 10 diamond variants that are really good for different purposes, and I hope this video helps a lot of new players that are getting into this game. There are tons of variants, and choosing which ones to invest can be quite tricky. Hopefully, this helps a bit. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this list. Be sure to give a like and subscribe if you find this content useful. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all have a great day, and I hope to see you in the next video.